We're taking a peek into geek culture and sharing our top 10 fandom favorites. Let Your Geek Side Show presents Geek Culture Countdown. Hey guys, this is Kitty. And this is Susan. And we're coming to you live from the Sideshow Studios in sunny California. Welcome back to the Geek Culture Countdown. Today we're taking the lead and assembling our list of the top 10 comic book captains. These high-ranking heroes and villains are at the top of their game, taking charge of entire teams or striking out on their own with the skills and strength to earn their captain title. Listen along to find out which fictional captains from Marvel and DC Comics take command of our countdown. Let's get started. So, comic book captains. There are, are quite a few of them. There are quite a few, but I think once you get past the first obvious few, you start to get kind of in the weeds there. Yeah, like, and it's a little, it gets gets a little awkward and kind, kind of weird. Kind of a weird list. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't really go beyond the bounds of, um, Marvel, of Marvel and DC. DC. I'm sure there are some in, in series like Astro City or Invincible, but I don't know all those characters' names and nuances. So we went with... Pretty much straight Marvel and DC captains cool on this Cool beans. There's like a lot of them. There too. are. And it's like, how do you get to be the captain of some of these things? That well, they... some of t- well, some of the time they just are like, you. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah. I'm the captain. You be the captain. That's another reason. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, we have we have we have a pretty good list though. I, yeah. I'm 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 solid. I'm pretty excited myself about number ten on our list because this was like I was like I'm pretty sure this is a character if I'm remembering correctly. I yeah. didn't make this up in a fever dream, and he has to be on our list. Okay, so should well, we just get yeah, started? just go just go for it. Who's ten? Um, number ten on our list is Captain Carrot. Uh, so Captain Carrot made his debut in a special insert of uh, the new Teen Titans number sixteen. It was like a little side comic that they stuffed in there um, and he's a member of an alternate earth in the DC universe that is populated entirely by sentient animals um, he was originally referred to in the comics as Roger Rabbit at the time he was introduced Roger Rabbit was only a literary character so it was a literary reference but they had to back down on that after the movie came out Oh, so he became Rodney Rabbit but his full name is Roger Rodney Rabbit um, so try saying that five times fast oh, um, man. his alter ego his civilian alter ego works at the DC comics in his Earth. It's called Earth C, but they gave it a number when they relaunched at some point. Mm. I forgot what number it was, but he works at DC Comics. He writes uh, the JLA, which stands for the Just a Lot of Animals, and it's a it's an animal parody of the Justice League. But as Captain Carrot, he um, he ate a cosmic carrot and gained a lot of superpowers, and oh he God. leads the Zoo Crew, uh, which is a team of all animal heroes, including Yankee Poodle, Rubber Duck, Pig Iron, and Alley Cat Abra. Oh, my God. I love Captain Carrot. He's I a- love Alley Cat Abra. That yes. sounds amazing. She's, she's a magician. Um, uh, kind, kind of like, like Zatanna, Zatanna. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them you can tell mm-hmm. where they came from. Um, I thought Pig Iron might be like an Iron Man parody, but he's actually kind of like a, he's just like a big, like a big dude. Um, he's a big pig. You can be a big pig too. Whee! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then Yankee Poodle's kind of like the all-American superhero, but mm. um, he's just a straight humor character and, and it's just so fun. Um, and I love the Just a Lot of Animals. <laughs> That's comic amazing. that he That's writes. That's pretty good. So number 10 on our list is Captain Carrot. Maha! Number 9 on our list is another captain who's sort of a parody, but he's a little bit more of a satire than just a straight humor character. Number 9 on our list is The Captain, uh, created by Warren Ellis and Stuart Eminen for Marvel's Next Wave, which was a, a kind of satire uh, series. He was formerly known as Captain... And I'm not physically capable of saying what a skull and crossbones sounds like, but it's to indicate an expletive. He used to be a yeah. captain with a swear word in his name. But he's also been known by a lot of other captain names, including Captain Power, Captain Ultra, Captain Ron, and Captain Kerosene. Um, he's a member of HATE, which is the highest anti-terrorism effort. And he teamed up with lesser-known superheroes um, like Elsa Bloodstone, who I love so much, and I hope they use her in more comics. Um, Machine Man, Boom Boom from X Force, and then Monica Rambeau as Spectrum. Mm-hmm. And he was he was I think the only entirely new character they created for that series. Hmm. Um, and and Next Wave is just a really silly parody that they they highly dramatized all the violence and the superheroic efforts of. Marvel Comics. Um, I think it only ran for two volumes, and it has that famous cover where they're all holding signs, and like the one guy in the back has the sign that says "Mark Miller licks goats." Yeah, that's yeah, uh-huh. that's yeah. that's yeah, yeah. next wave. Uh-huh. That's what that's from. So he's just a weird and satirical character that was created for this funny, um, lesser-known Marvel comic book. So the Captain or Captain Bleep is <laughs> number nine. Oh my nine god, on our I'm going to call him Captain Bleep from now on. <laughs> 
Uh, number eight on our list is Captain Metropolis. Uh, he was created by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons for Watchmen. Um, he actually made his first appearance in Watchmen number two and appeared in about 10 issues of Watchmen. Um, Nelson, his, his real name is Nelson Gardner, and he's one of the Minutemen from like the first Silk Spectre, mm. you know, Night Owl, all those guys. But um, he, he has like the distinction in the books of like the comedian, he actually never appears alive. Like you never oh. actually see the comedian alive. You only ever see him in flashbacks. Well, the only other character that that's true for is Captain Metropolis. So um, he was, he, he kind of is a little bit of a parody of Captain America because the Watchmen are all referenced to other um, superheroes or like, you know, dissections of that superhero. So he was a scrawny little asthmatic kid who then went into the Navy and became like really strong and became like the best at what he did. And then therefore was like super strong and then became Captain Metropolis. So who does that sound like? (laughs) Um, Yeah. So that's how he became number eight on our list because he is part of the iconic Minutemen and obviously the Watchmen. You can't really ignore any (laughs) captains that appeared in Watchmen. Cool. So number eight, Captain Metropolis. All right. Number seven on our list is Captain Boomerang from DC Comics. This is George Harkness, also known by his nickname Digger. He's Captain Boomerang, the notable villain of both versions, uh, Barry Allen and Wally West as Flash. He's an expert marksman and combatant, and he utilizes a variety of trick boomerangs, including ones that have blades in them, ones that are explosive, incendiary, or electrified. Um, Now, a son of his also took on the name Captain Boomerang, Owen Mercer, um, because Digger found himself, like, kind of outdated in a world where most of the villains were, like, metahuman or, like, super in some fashion, and he's he's just the guy who throws boomerangs. Um, So Owen also utilized um, trick boomerangs that had blades or that spewed acid, but he also had limited metahuman abilities. So this is a – Captain Boomerang is a title that has belonged to – a select few um, hmm. characters. and I didn't a, actually know that, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And then a live-action version of Captain Boomerang appeared uh, in both Arrow Season 3 and 5, and then, of course, in Suicide Squad, where he was played by Jai Courtney. Ah. <laughs> yes. So Captain Boomerang is number seven on our list. Cool. I also have number six. I was, I was like, Sorry. I was like, who was number six? <laughs> I also have number six. And actually, I didn't know a whole lot about this character, or this This is also another title that has belonged to multiple characters. Hmm. Um but this one was really cool to research. Number six on our list is Captain Universe. So Captain Universe is more of a persona than one singular hero, as the role has been undertaken by various hosts. It can possess multiple people. It's possessed, um, there were a pair of twins who were Captain Universe at one time. Most notably, uh, Captain Universe is the guardian and protector of eternity of the, um, the cosmic Marvel entities. Yeah. Captain Universe gets their power from the Unipower, which uh, grants a person uh, flight, strength, Univision, um, (laughs) telekinesis. Just like Univision? Yes, that's what it's called, Univision. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I was like, really? Um, But also, if they have natural powers, the Unipower empowers that power it augments that power I was like I was was gonna say it makes the power more powerful yes yes Um, so the first Captain Universe was a man named Ray Coffin uh, who was a retired astronaut astronaut but other heroes who have been possessed by uh, the unif the unit power oh my goodness uh, it's just gonna get more and have been Captain Universe include a couple of your favorites Doctor Strange the Hulk Daredevil X-23 and Spider-Man those are a lot of my favorites, actually. Those are a lot of your favorites. <laughs> I knew I was... about Doctor Strange, but yeah. actually did not know about X-23. So now I yeah. need to find those books because I, I've read almost everything that she's in. So I want to know when she actually had the unipower. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So the the entire idea, every Captain Universe kind of gets to be uh, yeah. included under the number six spot on our list. Cool. Um, Number five on our list is um, one of (laughs) – there are several captains that uh, represent nations, and (laughs) this is one of them. And this is Captain Britain, who was originally intended exclusively for the British comic comic market. British comic market. Didn't know that was going to be tough to say. I have a – I don't know where I got it, but I have an issue of Captain Britain and the Knights of Pendragon. Yeah, because he was initially only supposed to ever be published in – 
Britain, but that didn't actually happen. He was endowed with extraordinary powers by the legendary magician Merlin and his daughter Roma, and Captain Britain was assigned to uphold the laws of Britain. Do you have to say it? Does he have to do I it like that? I feel like he does, except I can't do a British accent, because one, the Brit would kill me, because he thinks I have a horrible <laughs> one, and two, I really just can't do one. We won't subject everyone yeah. to that. So Brian Braddock, is um, he first appeared in Captain Britain Weekly, number one, in 1976, Ooh, and weekly. that was the beginning of a series that is best remembered for runs who were written by people like, oh, you know, Chris Claremont, Alan Moore, those guys. Know those guys. Yeah, <laughs> those guys. Um, so, yeah, basically, you know, Alan Moore is like a famous British comic book writer. So, of course, he did a run on Captain Britain. So, um, yeah, that's what he does. He um, he now has crossed over into various teams um, and he's teamed up with other captains as well, like Captain Canuck and Captain America. So, um, yeah, but uh, one thing I always think is cool about him is that you notice his name is Brian Braddock and he has a famous sister and her name is Betsy Braddock, a.k.a. Psylocke. So he, he that's was also a member of Excalibur. I know, that's true. So there you go. Number five on our list is Captain Britain. I also have number four on our list. <laughs> it's kind of weird when you catch yourself off guard yeah, and you're, you're like, like I'm oh, done. Yeah, I'm done. Drop the mic, walk no, away. I'm not. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so number four on our list is Captain Cold. Now, that's pretty funny to me because I always think about like, oh, the Flash actually fights a lot of captains when you think about it because he also takes on Captain Boomerang. Who's and promoting all these people I don't know. to fight the Flash? I don't know, but Captain, yeah, so for what's happening there? So Captain Cold is Leonard Snart, the villain to the Flash. He is the leader of the rogues and the older brother of Golden Glider. He first appeared in Showcase number 8 in 1957 and even though he's in countless comics and he was rebooted in the New 52 along with the Flash, like very famously by Brian Bucciolato and Francis Manipool, that was such an amazing version of Captain Captain Cold. But for me, the best version is actually in the TV show because uh, <laughs> now I, Wetworth Miller is such an amazing Captain Cold. I only saw him because I, I haven't watched all of The Flash. I mainly stick to Supergirl, but yeah. I've watched all the crossovers, the crossovers. and the crisis on uh, uh, Earth, Earth X, X was fantastic. so good. And I love the way he talks like this the whole time. Like Captain for some Cold. reason, I'm Captain Cold. Like I don't like, I don't know <laughs> what made him decide to make that like that acting decision, but I'm here for it. But it's yeah, amazing and it works. Because and forgive the like obvious duh. The character could be very, very cold yeah, and just right. very but just adding that little bit of flair right. to fight the flash. Yeah. He's Captain Cold. Like, and like it, it's like the like he thinks he's a Dick Tracy villain, but he's not. Like it's <laughs> so it's so great. So um that's clearly how he made it up higher on our up higher on our list as number four, Captain Cold. <laughs> Alrighty. Number three on our list is a mantle that is shared not only between seven heroes in one uh, one universe, but it's also a name that has belonged to other uh, characters across the, the uh, licenses. So number three on our list is Captain Marvel, but the Marvel version of Captain Marvel. <laughs> so Captain Marvel is a mantle, as I said, that has belonged to seven different Marvel Comics heroes. And part of that is due to the re- the the need to retain the trademark on right. the name after it was um, dropped by Fawcett Comics. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Marvel gained the copyright on Captain Marvel in the 60s, and to retain the trademark, they've had to publish a new Captain Marvel title at least once every two years, which is why it then explains some of... I'm like, oh, that's why they keep... Rebooting like, I, her. They keep rebooting her or or him, and like I'm like, wow. And so they've made so many different characters into Captain Marvel mm-hmm. to kind of help with that publishing effort. Interesting. But... Um, and it's it's really cool to see how and who takes the how how the mantle is passed and to who. Um, the original wielder of the mantle was Marvell, um, but it's been passed to um, Genus Vell and Philavell, who are descendants of his, mm-hmm. as well as the human Monica Rambeau, um, a Skrull sleeper agent named Kinnear. Um Love those scroll names. Yeah, scroll uh, names are great. Like uh, Trell, Trell and Baranki and Barank- Pitto, yep. mm-hmm. just. So Kinnear was the Captain Marvel. Um, Novar, who's also Marvel boy. And then most notably, most recently, Carol Danvers. Um, I'm not going to go into all seven of them, obviously, or we'd be here for a while. But every character takes on different uh, kind of different versions of the power depending on how they inherited the mantle. It's not a straight everybody gets my powers. I keep passing it down like that. Um, As members of the Kree, Genus, Phila, and Mar are all – they have the Kree physiology – and um, 
Phil Lavelle had like some energy absorption powers. Monica Rambeau could actually turn herself into solid light and energy, which is why she then took on the names Photon and Spectrum. Mm-hmm. And then Carol Danvers um, has some advantages because they've recently clarified she has half human, half Cree DNA. And she had half Cree DNA after the Psyche Magnetron incident with with Marvell, but more recently they've made it so that she has always been half Cree, half human. And so there's there I mean there's a Captain Marvel for everybody, but it's most notably Marvell, Carol Danvers, and then Monica Rambeau. I mean she doesn't yeah, the, get enough credit. For me, Photon and like is a thing. Like yes. that she'll always be part of that whole descendants of the like people who took on that mantle. Yeah. Honestly, forget uh I'm sorry, forget Genus Val, Philavel, Novar, and Kinnear. He was a, he was just the Captain Marvel during the secret invasion event because he um, was a sleeper I mean he was a yeah. sleeper agent who had had the DNA, had his memories erased, so he thought he was Marvell, and mm. and f- for a lot of, uh, for all intents and purposes, he almost was, yeah. but he was a Skrull sleeper agent. So, the various captains Marvel belonging to Marvel Comics take number three on our list. Number two on our list is also Captain Marvel. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what happened? Um, AKA Shazam. Um, so the, the legality will just, the, of things that have happened will just descend you into madness. If you start <laughs> thinking about all these different things and what happened with the trademark and licensing agreements, like seriously, your mind will just like, you'll glaze over and it'll be the end of all being. Anyway. So, so strap in for the next hour yeah. on our podcast. <laughs> so created in 1939 by C.C. Beck and Bill Parker, uh, Captain Marvel was created for Wiz Comics number two that was owned by Fawcett Comics. So Billy Badson is a child who can summon the powers of the six elders, Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, and Mercury. I can almost do that without looking. I always forget the second A. Um, <laughs> there were obviously several legal disputes that happened first. Uh, he, they were actually sued by DC before they became part of DC because DC claimed that they had just copied Superman. Um, but instead, what DC decided to do was re-trademark Captain Marvel once it was then taken back into Marvel Comics, and they retrademarked him as Shazam. And as Zachary Levi, who is playing Shazam in the upcoming movie, says himself, let's not pit Captain Marvels against one another. Let's just enjoy them both. Because to be honest, they're not the same character at all. And they both have really different, like, pa- none of the same powers, essentially. <laughs> that Nothing about them is the same except, like, the history, their, their joint history. So... Really, to me, what Billy Batson has always taught us is that sometimes you need to ask for help to be more heroic. And if that means summoning the six immortal elders, then you do it. But also, it's not unthinkable in order to like be a superhero to also retain the mind of a child. That's one so, of my favorite parts. That's about my him. favorite part about him too, is that when you read these books, it's like you forget how creative children are and you forget how they are still seeing the world in like a just non uh, cynical way. Yeah. And that's what Billy Batson brings to anytime you see Shazam in any kind of group, he's always the one who can bring like, he's basically anti Batman, but not, but n- not a good boy the way Superboy, Superboy, <laughs> Superman <laughs> is. Um, he's just, sort of in the middle where he can still think open-mindedly and creatively without thinking, you know, humanity's the worst. Yeah, the so, does. so many adult heroes are are jaded and, and their morality is coded by, by what they believe to be true about right. this world they've seen for so long. Right. And, and that, yeah, that refreshing childlike innocence and, right. and that more open-hearted, and I then, think, morality is really cool. And then on the flip side, the thing that I love about Shazam being summoned into Billy Badson is like, this kid who is kind of not really he doesn't fit in he's a, he's an outcast but he is able to summon this power because sometimes it's okay to ask for help it mm-hmm. teaches it te- so if you're a kid reading captain marvel what it's teaching you is like it's okay to need some other powers sometimes it's okay to summon other things in order to help yourself and then as captain marvel looking at it from a kid, like at a kid, you you retain the childlike innocence and creativity. Mm-hmm. So that's why number two on our list is Shazam. Nothing happened. I didn't know. <sighs> Lightning didn't strike the Nothing studio. Nothing happened, you guys. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> Darn. Okay. 
So number one on our list, I feel like it's pretty <laughs> obvious at this point because we've been dancing around this one captain who never got his dance. Oh, oh. wow. Oh. Wow. Were you holding that or did oh. you just come up with that? I just that? came up with that That's right really now. That's really upsetting. It's really upsetting and it's really like, hmm. So number one on our list is Captain America. Another captain that has actually been held by the, his shield has been held by several different people, including, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, who, you know, have real names. And my favorite, Danielle Cage. Yeah. Because she, my Danielle favorite thing Cage about and my, and Peggy Carter. And Peggy Carter. Yeah. My favorite thing about Danielle Cage is that she's like, because my father was Luke Cage and I'm unbreakable. I don't only carry the shield. I am the shield. Oh, She's that's like, I awesome. am the shield. I like that. Yeah. So created by <laughs> Joe Simon and Jack Kirby in 1941, Captain America initially showed up to fight the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, so it ran. he ran all the way until 1953 because, in, you know, after World War II, there was that other war that we got into. Um, and then from 1953 to 1964, there was no Captain Marvel comics, which is something I America. Yeah, a Captain Captain America comic. From Marvel. <laughs> From Marvel, Captain America. This is getting really confusing, you guys. Um, but yeah, he's been consistently published since 1964, which is like a very, very long run of Captain America books. Yeah. Um, many have held the shield, but mostly we think of Captain America as Steve Rogers, the boy who took that first do- dose of super serum and became more than he was. But you know what? I feel like he was always Captain America, even when... He was just that scrawny little kid who couldn't get on a soccer team to save him, his life. That <laughs> never happened in the comics, but um, you know. But we I mean. would imagine that. Yeah, he <laughs> he probably tried out for all the sports and just never made it on the team. <laughs> and asked all the well, he didn't really ask any girls to dance until Peggy. So I'm bringing that up again. Well, <laughs> yeah, but but in a in a way, kind of also like looking back at Shazam, we've got he he wasn't a child necessarily, yeah. but it's the it's the ability to retain that that goodness. Yeah. Even though you have to ask for help and people are going to – someone else is going to make you into a symbol for other people. Right. And you have to use that power. But he, Yeah. Yeah. No, and the reason Captain America is number one on our list is because not only does he embody everything that a – superhero captain should be but also he's you know the leader of the avengers he's crossed over into the mcu he's he's done so much and has become a symbol in so many different ways like even when you take into like the civil war storyline he has that insanely famous line where like i i'm still paraphrasing paraphrasing it where it's like plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and say no you move like Mm -hmm. that is so amazing and you know, Captain America, man, like you, you can't really beat that guy. And that's another and that's another character I, I liked as we climbed up here with the exception of, of like Captain Britain and Captain Cold. We started getting into mantles that like a lot of people have held. Yeah. And and every person that picks up that shield, I know there's not like a worthiness enchantment on it, but right. there is something so symbolically heavy. Right. And you do have characters like John Walker, U.S. agent, who misuse what the shield stands for. Right. And it's very fascinating to see. What what happens when different people pick up the shield? And and again, like like um, there was Isaiah Bradley as well, mm-hmm. um, who was the black the first black Captain America. Right. And, and you get what these people represent as as parts of the greater America as a whole. So right. I think the the symbolism. I mean, and of course, like Steve Rogers, OG, it, yeah, OG, yeah. But every person who picks up that shield and adds something either good or bad adds to that symbolism it of changes what, it, what means. it means but it's like it's like you know that thing where you, it's like the cast iron skillet like the more flavor you put on it the stronger it becomes in yeah. like a weird way that's a stupid metaphor the shield is you, a cast iron <laughs> skillet yeah in, in this great kitchen that we call America yeah, if you don't take if you don't take anything else away from this podcast the American shield is a cast oh man I love it I'm retiring from podcast I right love now it. I love it I love it's it I love it it's all done mic drop Number one is Captain America, <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Wow, that was a great list. I can't believe we all – I also, as we climbed up, I'm like, we got through this whole list without an O oh, Captain, my captain joke, and I'm kind of disappointed. But I would gladly have any of these people as my captain, except maybe, like, the captain, Captain Bleep. Um, like, I'm not crazy about him. I mean – I mean, he's funny, but he's not a good leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
to be fair, though, like most of these guys are pretty good leaders, like even Captain Cold, who's like the leader of the rogues, like in the new 52 iteration. That's like, a leader. Yeah. But the, in the new 52 iteration, they they have like a code of honor. So it it turns into honor like among thieves. <laughs> yeah, it's honor among thieves. So they become kind of like less villains and more like antiheroes. Hmm. So it's it's interesting. You know, yeah. you have to have some sort of honor in order to be a captain, I guess. Yeah. Even if it's slightly misguided. Well, I think or a cast iron skillet. Or a cast iron skillet. Yeah. Get yourself a cast iron skillet and you're ready to lead. <laughs> I mean, Rapunzel would say that too. <gasps> Whoa, Rapunzel and then Flynn Rider, who's Zachary Levi, who's Shazam. Boom. It all comes maybe full circle. <laughs> oh my God, this podcast, man. We're we're on a roll. Let's just keep going. How many more captains can we think of? I don't know. All right, cool. Next time. <laughs> Next time on Geek Culture Countdown. So to recap our list, number 10 is Captain Carrot. Number nine is The Captain. Number eight is Captain Metropolis. Number seven is Captain Boomerang. Number six is Captain Universe. Number five is Captain Britain. Number four is Captain Cold. Number three is Captain Marvel from Marvel. Number two is Captain Marvel slash Shazam. And number one is Captain America. So did your favorites rank high on our list or should we have demoted some of these captains? If we missed someone that you think should be on the list, be sure to check out our blog and email us your opinions at podcasts at geeksideshow.com. And that was our top 10 comic book captains. Do you enjoy the Geek Culture Countdown? We are proud to bring you pop culture content completely ad-free, but that doesn't mean we don't need your support to help keep us going. Please take a moment to leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform and help spread the word about our podcast. We welcome fan feedback. Email us at podcasts at sideshow.com with your thoughts and suggestions for how we can make our shows even better. Plus, tune in for our other pop culture podcasts. See your favorite comic and film characters evolve across two generations in the bi-weekly Then and Now podcast. Hear exclusive interviews with celebrities and pop culture industry leaders as they let their geek side show in Look Who Showed Up. Then get all the latest pop culture news with our daily briefing, a two-minute breakdown of all the biggest geek headlines perfect for your Alexa or Google News briefings. We wouldn't exist without your continued support. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to let your geek side show.